Happy Monday, guys. Lindsay Robinson here. I'm a certified hypnotherapist and success alignment coach. As always, coming to you with Kelsey Aida, who is a manifesting freaking genius. And uh, today, on a new episode of High Vibe in It, on this wonderful October 14th, we are talking about what are we talking about? Spirit guides. Spirit guides, how to connect with them, what they are. Um, and everything about spirit guides. And I'm very excited because me and Kelsey both could geek out for hours on this topic. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a really, really good discussion. We've already had some uh, different points of view, which will be good to dive into as well. So mm -hmm. hi, Kels. Hey, girl. I was going to say <laughs> different perspectives. I always use that word. <laughs> the word of the day. The word um, of my life. Yes. It, it's, I mean... <laughs> I start using it more now that I know you, for See, sure. That's what happens when you hang out with me too much. You start taking on all these different perspectives. And then when you speak, it has to be like in a really conscious way. Like, well, from this perspective, it's this. But from this other perspective, it's this. From this POV. This POV. POV sounds dirty. It sounds like a bad word for some reason. Not POS. <laughs> POV. I know. But or angle. Sense. Yeah perception. I don't know. There's a million words. Anyway, so uh, before we get into that, all the goodness about spirit guides, um, you have something to tell everyone. Yes, yes. I have a super exciting announcement, you guys. So here's the deal. For the first time ever, I am hosting an in-person retreat in Mexico on the beach. Well, the house is like a few blocks from the beach, but we will be spending time on the beach. And this is going to be a self-love leveling up five-day experience with me. It'll be really intimate. There's only going to be 12 people because that's all we can fit in the house. Um, and it's going to be basically a short week of loving on ourselves, learning how to up-level in the arena of self-love and getting coaching from me, doing taro. We planned it around the full moon. So there will definitely be some moon rituals going on. And it's going to be a really badass, awesome experience. It's going to be all inclusive. So if you want the details about this retreat, um, I just created like a wait list page because I didn't have like a full page up yet that gives you everything. So go to kelseyaida.com forward slash retreat and you can get your name on the wait list because there's only 12 spots. So obviously the first 12 people to sign up will be coming with me. The retreat's in February. So this February coming up 2020, I believe it is the 19th through the 23rd. So yeah, block off your calendar if you want to come. Get on my wait list. The first three people to sign up are going to get a month of coaching from me after the retreat. So they get like bonus time with me, um, which will be really, really, really valuable because then we can take the work that we did at the retreat and expand on it. And it's going to be a great time of learning, up-leveling, and integrating. And by integrating, I mean hanging out by the pool and getting your tan on at the beach. <laughs> and that eating tacos, so my favorite. I've never been to Mexico. Oh, it's great. There are so many beautiful parts. The retreat's going to be in Puerto Vallarta, which is a little beach town. And it's like touristy enough where a lot of people speak English um, and a lot of places take dollars and stuff. Um, but it's not so touristy like Cancun or Cozumel yeah. or one of those areas. I love it. Well, guys, go yeah. to her website, check it out, get on the list. And if you don't make the cut, get on the wait list because I'm sure you're going to want to do this again. Maybe the next one will be oh, a yeah. deal. This, if not this making any promises, goes well, which but maybe. I mean, I'm assuming it will because I can't see how it wouldn't. Everything is like going to be amazing about it. Um, then this will become probably – Right now, it's my intention to make it a part of my business model and a part of the way that I help people. So maybe I'll do a and couple we, of retreats a year. We've talked about doing a high vibe one. So yeah, Lindsay knows in the works of potentially collaborating on a retreat here soon. So that would be pretty fun too. What a cool first time in Mexico for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> doing this amazing retreat. And I've seen ever. the place. The place is amazing. It's so pretty. Okay. Um, yeah, so go check that out. What did you do this weekend? Um, well, right now I'm at my sister's house in Georgia. Normally I film from my kitchen, but right now I'm technically in her family room kitchen area. Yeah. <laughs> it was the best place I could find to set up my computer. Um, but yeah, I'm visiting her. She lives in Athens by the University of Georgia. Oh my God. And today oh, cool. we went on a Vampire Diaries tour because I'm obsessed I saw. with Vampire Diaries. Okay. You guys need to go watch my she Instagram She keeps trying story. to get me into this show. 
because I've been watching for years and I like always watch it over and over. But anyway, if you follow me on Instagram at Kelsey Aida, you can watch on my story everything that we did today because it was so fun. I saw all the places where they filmed um, like all the kissing scenes on the front porch and all the romantic stuff that I like totally love. It was fun. That's so cool. Well, that's awesome. one way to be a geek. Oh, Another yeah. Another way <laughs> is to do what I did this weekend, which is go- we went to the North Vegas um, Renaissance Fair. It's actually not in North Vegas, but it's the mm-hmm. nearest one to us. It was at, um, it was more south, but it was so fun. Have you ever been to the Renaissance Fair? I have not, but it seems fun. I'm surprised I like at that up, because so. you used to do, what did you used to do? The, the twig person thing, right? You were on stilts. <laughs> What's it, what did you when do? When I was a living vine? That's the one. You yeah. would belong so perfectly, seamlessly at the True. Renaissance Fair. True. I am surprised we never performed at a Renaissance Fair. You're so right. It would be like very so, Lord of the Rings-ish. Oh, well, yeah. At that event. So I used to go every year with my dad as a kid because we lived in Michigan. And so the nearest one was like um, a little ways away. And he used to make wooden catapults. He had a vendor like booth. Oh my God. So dorky. So cool. That's awesome. And so we used, to, I swear. So we used to go every year. And then um, when I moved to LA, I had never been to it. I don't think I even heard that there was one there. I don't know why I assumed it was only a Michigan thing. Um, that's what happens when you move away is your perspective gets bigger. Uh, your, you know, what you know gets bigger. But so when I had kids, I was like, we have to go. We have to go. So now it's like a family tradition. We went in LA and now we're going every year here. Dudes, if you've never been to the Renaissance Fair, it's called semi-different things, Pleasure Fair. Um, ours is in Vegas is the Age of Chivalry, but it's all basically the same thing. Look for Wait, one near so you. Wait, so more importantly, what did you wear? Oh my and gosh. are there dude. pictures and can you post them of on course. Patreon? <laughs> Okay. Yes, I will. For the Patreon so page, really, we're going to post a pic there so you guys can see it. <laughs> I don't really go like crazy, crazy. I wish I did, but nobody else has like renaissance stuff. So I'm like yeah. the only one in my family. So like last year I was super, super pregnant. So I wore like this green, like Robin hood e looking dress with some tights and like my boots. Um, this year I wore like my, I have like a maroon floor length maxi dress that I wore with a belt, which kind of looked monkish. I don't know. I don't know what look I was going for, (laughs) but it looked like it belonged. It didn't look out of place. And then I bought like a flower crown at the Renaissance Fair and it was like so cute. Anyway, so I I do have pictures and I will post them. Okay. If you want to see, go to our Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash high vibe. So you can get the goods and see this. Go check it out. But yeah, that was really fun. We all came home super tired. The kids were not happy by the end of the day it's like it's like going to Disneyland you have to cram everything into like one day and it's just impossible the parents are irritated the kids are irritated everybody just wants to go home they're all sweaty and sunburnt because it's here in Vegas (laughs) but I'm so excited we went I will go every year until it's not a thing anymore and I'll be so happy even when they're grumpy because I don't care (laughs) super fun it is so so fun anyway yeah so that was really good I know our best lives off in Visiting Georgia. sisters, stalking vampires. I've only driven through Georgia. I've never actually, that's not true. I did stay in Georgia once. We went to a restaurant in Georgia because we used to drive down from Michigan to Florida. You have to they film a lot states, of shit here. As you know. Yeah, it's becoming more of a thing, isn't it? Stranger Over Things is Georgia. almost all filmed in Georgia, which is oh. one of my favorite shows because, you know, Eleven's my hero. And, Y'all caught up? Oh, yeah. I cried too. in the finale. Did you cry? No, really? No. Uh, yeah. Who, wait, wait, wait. Who are you talking about? You're talking about I cried for about? Billy. Oh, <laughs> it's because I always you cried for, for the villain. Ones. Okay, first of all, if you understood why he was a villain, which they show you why when Eleven goes into his memories, then you have compassion for him and you realize that he's just a troubled soul and he couldn't help it. He was a low vibrational person. He was a match to being uh, possessed by the demon. I agree. We're talking energy. And if you notice in the show, all that the low vibe true. people were the ones that got taken over by the aliens. None of the little high vibe kids. Were I know. The world. Hello. <laughs> that is so true. And <laughs> isn't that funny? That's usually the theme in those kinds of things though, isn't it? Is like they have this underlying trend of like Easter eggs, or if you really look, you'll, you'll find stuff like that. But yeah, that's so true. And I totally agree. It was, well, was a low yeah. vibe energy and that's what happened. And now that you have explained, I might have a little bit more compassion for 
<laughs> Billy. But I'm surprised you didn't you didn't get all emotional about the one I'm talking about. I don't want to give any spoilers. I'm trying to be so careful, but like who hasn't seen it by now for real? I know. If you haven't watched it already, <laughs> that happened in like the fourth of July. So you need to get- <laughs> You had time, okay? <laughs> Um, I do get it though, because like sometimes there's there's shows that we want to watch, but we can't until the kids go to sleep, and then by then we're just so tired. So we have shows we've been trying to catch up on for months and months, but we just can't because you can't watch this stuff with the kids, you know. Hopefully, you don't watch this stuff with the kids. That's true. I could see that being a conflict of interest. (laughs) We don't want to. We don't want to screw them up that way. We have enough different ways. Young yet, yeah. We'll wait a little. There are too longer. many ways to screw up the kids. So if I can help it, I'm not gonna promote that. But yeah, Stranger Things, great show. And what a great segue into Spirit Guides. Let's talk about Spirit okay. Guides. Spirit Guides, Stranger <laughs> Things. First of all, a lot of the stuff Eleven does on Stranger Things is based in real things that people can do. Like myself, I can tell you that scene where she holds Billy's hands and sees into all his memories. That's a real thing. I mean, of course, it's, like, dramatized in the show. I still haven't figured out how to flip cars with my mind or oh my light goodness gracious. candles with my mind. But if I could light a candle with my mind before I die, I'll be very fulfilled. If you can light a candle with your mind and prove to me that you did it with your mind, you know, like, I have to be in the room watching you. If you can do that. So satisfying. You guys, I'm, then- like, somewhat joking but also mostly serious because I really <laughs> That this could be real. A lot of the other stuff she does is real. The remote viewing, people do that. People have done that. I know people who can do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of her other, you know. Anyway, we don't need to get into that. That'll be for our psychic episode when we talk about enhancing your psychic abilities. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe because that will definitely be a future episode here coming up soon. Mm -hmm. But today we're talking about spirit guides. So let's jump into it. What are spirit guides, Kels? Hmm, my definition of spirit guides would be beings, energies, people on the other side who are working on our best interests, on our behalf, supporting us through our journey. Um, and they're, I guess you could call them elevated beings or beings of higher consciousness that give us a little support because, you know, we all fucking need it because life can be hard and weird and confusing. I would agree with that description. Yeah, for sure. There, there are unseen supporters who are really only there to cheer us on from the sidelines and sometimes um, communicate when we are maybe going down a dangerous or potentially, uh, potentially dangerous or harmful path. They can send us these signals, whether or not we listen, that's another story, but yeah, they're just, they're just our helpers. They're our team. Yeah. Our I team like to on the other side. Team. I always yeah. refer to mine as my spirit team. And when I do tarot readings for people, I always say that I'm connecting with their spirit team. I just use mm-hmm. words. Cause I do imagine them like on the sidelines, like, woo, like every time I do like an up leveling or I like make that right decision or yeah. I, I don't know. I do something I've never done before. I achieve a new accomplishment as far as like my growth is concerned. I feel like they're on the sides like, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I have full on conversations with my spirit guides just all the time. What's like the most recent one that you had? (laughs) Okay. So you know how me and you like have the same way of not ever listening Oh, you mean like like, we ask for a sign and then we get the sign (laughs) and then five minutes later we have anxiety again. So then we ask for a billion more signs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same, same. So it was something like that where I was like um, getting impatient and I knew I was getting impatient. So instead of like, um, I feel like I have a pretty good connection to my guides. I feel like I I know their style by now pretty well just because I opened the door to allow that learning to occur. Um, and I feel like obviously they know me very well. So I had like the entire conversation in my head where it was just like, I know, but this and this and this. And I would like imagine what they would say, which is a huge like uh, tool that anyone can do at their disposal because you have all the answers anyway. And then what I, I remember saying out loud, like it became an out loud conversation when I was like, <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> like, like, a, like I was being talked to by my parent as a teenager, like, yeah, dad, I get it. I know. Um, but it was just like a frustration of like, I know that I know this, but it's like really hard in those moments. And it was just, it was something to that effect where it was just like, 
I felt like a petulant little teenager being lovingly guided, but I didn't want to hear it, you know, and we all have those moments, I think, but yeah, mine come out audibly. Thank God I was in my office by myself. Otherwise my, my kids would be like, mom, what are you, uh, what you doing? Who are you, uh, talking to? Yeah, who are you talking to? Uh, just some spirits, nothing out of the norm. Yeah. If I, you know, if I, I have, we, I have talked to them about stuff like that and I'm easing them into it, but my, my seven-year-old has a vivid imagination to the point where if I tell him like, oh, I'm just having a conversation with my spirit guides, he'd be like, what are you talking about? You know, oh, he'll get all out. scared. <laughs> yeah. So I want to, I want to have it, that conversation in a, in a more appropriate setting that I can decide, you know, so yeah. that he's the least bit do- deer in the headlights when I tell him. <laughs> um, right now we're focusing on the power of his own mind and, you know, what he can do and start doing and really never forgetting that he does have complete control and complete power over what his life's going to be. Cause that's, that's where I think all of us, especially me, I went, that's where I kind of lost my way, but not in a dramatic way. Just like, can I do this? You know, lost my sense of empowerment because I, you just forget society teaches you to forget. So I never want my kids to forget that they are completely in control and there's no exception <laughs> to that rule. You are always in control and you're in charge of your own mind and your thoughts. Anyway, you get so to write the script. Correct. Exactly. So what was the last, do you, do you have conversations with your spirit guides? Yes, usually in journaling form. And I actually mm-hmm. haven't done it in a while because I've been getting their guidance more just in a sense of intuition. Like for example, I just have this knowing that like this time in my life is like a good like reset as far as like my business goes, as far as my relationship goes. This is kind of like a resting period after the storm of the relationship that I had earlier. So I'm just like, I'm not like trying to force dating. I'm not like trying to rush into like the idea of being with someone. I'm just like, okay, these couple months are just for like resting, you know, like I have just this knowing and I feel like it is from them to a degree. But it's also just like me connecting with my like highest timeline. Like what's going to serve me the best right now? Um, So that's like a message that is so clear to me. And it's not even like it was written out. It's not like I heard it. It's not like I saw it. It's just a knowing. Um, That's how a lot of my information comes through. Which is the hardest part to explain. It's just a knowing. Well, what does that mean? You don't know until you know. know. You can't explain how you know. You just know. You just can't. And then it happens. And then you're like, I fucking knew it. (laughs) Yeah. That's so funny. Cause this Saturday, my, we were taking my son to the soccer game and he was playing this game on his iPad and it was like, pick a box to get a prize. And he knew, he's like, I don't know how I knew. I just knew like three times in a row, by the way, he's seven. So in case that makes it better or worse, I don't know. But he goes, I just knew, I just knew. And I was like, yeah, but that's called your intuition. And then me and my husband started getting into the conversation of intuition versus instinct and that was super interesting too but it started with him just like I just I don't know how I knew that and I was like but you felt it like deep deep down right he's like yeah and I was like there you go that's the feeling you need to connect with whenever you want to like base your decisions off of what you feel is right is you need that feeling deep deep down and yep you know getting him in touch with what that feels like but yeah he and then he now every time he does he's like I did it again mom I did it again I'm like yeah you're great good job that's cute. And we just did an episode about intuition, like one we or two did. episodes back. So go listen to If only to that it. conversation happened before that episode, but it happened after. And I immediately went back to our episode where we talked about it. And it was just like reinforcing basically everything that we talked about in the episode is really, really cool. That's awesome. Okay. So we got to hit to a break, but when we come back, we're going to keep talking about spirit guides, teach you a little bit how to get more in touch with your spirit guides. And also at the end of the show, Lindsay's going to do a hypnosis for us to meet our spirit guides so one of my favorite ones to do see you then Hey guys, Kelsey Aida here. Welcome back. And we're talking about spirit guides. Um, Lindsay was saying that she has audible conversations with hers, which is great. (laughs) And I usually have conversations with mine via writing in my journal. Um, And we want to get into some ways that you guys can start to connect with yours and just have this general conversation exploring the topic of spirit guides. Like, what are they? Why do they even care about us? How can we ask for their help? Things like that. 
Yeah, and just to be clear, there are different names um, that people will go by. So we're not strictly talking about this one thing that's called spirit guides. It can also be angels. It can be um, soul guides. It can be spirit team, you know, however you decide to say it. If you believe that there is something that you, that is maybe unseen that is supporting you from the unseen realm, then that's what we're referring to. Yeah. Um, and you can I even talk to my grandma guides. You yes, can thank have you, thank you. guides that are people, your ancestors that have passed on. Yeah. You can have a guide that guides a lot of people like Jesus could be on your spirit team. Uh, you could have guides. I mean, there's all types of guides that you can have yeah. on your team. Yeah, and yeah, usually yeah. your team is like an ensemble of all these different types of. That's interesting because energy. when I first, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I first like was growing up and getting introduced to this idea of angels and spirit guides and, you know, I, I had this idea in my head and I don't know where it came from that everyone has one, like one guide. And then as I got older and I started reading more and getting more in, in depth with it, this idea of more and more guides kept popping up and I was like, Oh, interesting. So, and I got it confirmed by uh, a friend who is highly intuitive and said that most people will have more than one, a couple, like maybe one or two, maybe three prominent ones. But the idea of your spirit team is much, much bigger than one. (laughs) It's much, much bigger than just like a small group. Um, which, which I guess makes me feel a lot better. Um, Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I don't know why. I always thought there was just one per person and that's it. But so how did you, that you find team, out who your spirit guides are? Because well, you know who some of yours are. I know some of mine. Yeah. So I went to a channeler who's a dear, dear friend and I talk about her all the time. And she confirmed that. Okay. So I had this dream and I've never forgotten it in my whole life. It's one of the most prominent dreams that I will always attach myself to. Um, because of how profound it was and it was just me um, in like a dimly lit coliseum and it was empty it was kind of like a coliseum I don't know if it was a coliseum but there were pill they were like columns maybe that's why I'm getting that word but like mm, marble columns and there were like curtains hanging from the columns and they were like in slow motion breathe like swaying in the breeze I know I'm painting a really vivid picture here but it was very it was like almost like sunrise so it was blue light coming in, um, like right before the sun came up. And I just remember being there alone in this giant open room. And I was just like, I felt so, so good. I can't explain it. Like nothing about it would point to a reason why I felt that good, except I just did. I felt so good, better than I've ever felt when I was awake (laughs) for sure. Um, and I just had this con this like intuition, this feeling that a behind my left shoulder and I never turned around to look because I didn't need to in the dream but behind my left shoulder I just knew that there was this I could see this hologram ish looking thing that could only be described as like Mary but I've never been overly like religious so the fact that a Mary type figure showed up in my dream makes no sense if you're looking at logic because it just wasn't a part of my every day but yet she was there. There she was. And it was that presence that really made me feel the way that that dream made me feel. I know it. I know it for a fact, almost as if she was like shooting the feeling of just abundant love and goodness into me. Um, And it never, like I said, that dream never went away. I woke up feeling amazing, like so amazing. I can't remember how old I was, but I must have been like just out of college or something. And I, when I, when I saw my, my friend, who's a channeler, I asked her, you know, this dream never left me. I know it's got a deeper meaning than just like a dream I had one day. Uh, what, what are you seeing as, is as far as like what that means? And she confirmed that it was one of my spirit guides. She, and she, she went as far uh, as to give me the name, <clears throat> which I don't know how to pronounce, <laughs> but it's more like a sound. I don't even want to attempt it because it's ridiculous, but it's more like a vibrational sound that um th- that she tells me that that's what her name is so every time i pray even now even today every time i pray that's who i'm praying to because that is something that i know i can attach myself to um but yeah so that's that's one of them and then um there's 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 another one that I don't really feel as attached to maybe it's one of the background ones. Um, but I would like to, you know, do more work into getting more in touch with them. But I felt like after I got that attachment to the one, 
to the one, I was like, yeah, this is, this is who I'm directing all of my intention to now when I pray and when I ask for guidance, because I know I've seen her, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's really cool. I know a couple of my spirit guides. Um, I have one that is like this abuelita, like little old lady. And she's like a like Native American, like dark skin, long hair that's in a braid. She looks like the- Don't um, say Coco. Yes. <laughs> she looks just like that. She looks like the little old lady. I was so seeing Coco cool. in my head. That is and too she's funny. she's like this magical, witchy, healer lady. And I'm sure she's one of my ancestors. Like I'm positive of yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and then another one of my spirit guides that I know of for sure that I've also seen imagery of in my third eye is, um, this lady, she's like an angel. She floats. She's like pink and purple, like her aura. And she's like shiny and she has this long, like gorgeous hair. She's very like the quintessent, like female form, um, kind of like, I would describe her as like a fairy slash mermaid slash uh like angel energy like all combined because like Dude. her dress like it 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 um goes down and then it like flows into nothing like she I don't even know how to explain it but I saw her like in a vision when I was working with my friend James who's a um I would describe him as a shaman um who I work with a lot and he was describing it to me. And then the funny thing was like a day later, I saw a bumper sticker of like this pink and purple mermaid looking thing on the back of someone's car. And I was like, Oh my God, it's her. Like it was exactly her. It was that so, is so fun. Did you take a picture? Cool. Yeah, I did. Post it on that Patreon. I know. I don't have to find it. It's like somewhere. I gotta see it. Roll, I've actually but. drawn my guide, the one that I saw in my dream. I don't know where it is at this point, but if I find it, I'll post it as well. It's just, it's, it. yeah. All I can think of is like Mary, mother Mary. Um, which would be ridiculous, except it's not <laughs> the fact that yeah. Mary like could be one of your spirit guides. She, she's very, very possible. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so my dream, um, showing me my spirit guide, Kelsey's, uh, experience learning her spirit guides. There's tons and tons of different ways to get in touch with your spirit guides and to really connect with them, or I should say reconnect with them. Cause you kind of already, you're are, you are, there's no connecting with them cause you're already connected, but re-getting to know who they are and, and what their purpose is in your life, that kind of thing. My favorite is dreams because it's that um, dreams and hypnosis, I think tied because with the dreams and with the hypnosis, there's that emotional level of experience in a dream. You don't know it's a dream until you wake up and then you're like, oh, that didn't make any sense. Or, oh, that was very, very profound. As in my case, there's always that emotional attachment and the emotional attachment is what's going to get that belief seated in the subconscious. So um, that's why I love dreams because you feel as if it's actually happening. And so um, that emotional experience is going to, is going to have a a profound effect on you, which is the intent. You know, if they're coming to you in a dream, that's what they want to do is give you that experience. So you don't just dismiss it. There's a reason I couldn't dismiss that dream, you know, for, for years and years. And then of course, hypnosis for the same reason, you have that emotional experience, you feel that connection, that connection is real. Um, because your subconscious has said it's real. (laughs) It's experienced that it's felt it. And so it's like, yep, that happened. That's real. Um, so it, it creates that connection even stronger, but there's tons of different ways. Kelsey journals, and that's how she gets, she communicates with hers. Um, what are some other ways that you've come across Kels that are really, really effective? Mm, Well, because I like channeling so much, I usually just channel mine directly and I like take on the consciousness of that spirit guide, but I know everyone doesn't like to do that or thinks that's weird or doesn't know how. Um, and that's like a whole nother episode. So, um, a good way is to find someone who is highly intuitive and very psychic. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you were introduced to some of your Mm -hmm. guides through your friend. Um, I was introduced to some of mine through my friend, um, we're trying to get him on because he's the most psychic person I've ever met in my whole entire life. And we have questions about it (laughs) that we want to bring to you guys. Um, But if you want like a session with him, you can work with him. Uh, Just go to wolfspiritlove.com. I believe that's his website. And he can help you get in touch with your spirit guides. Lindsay can help you get in touch with your spirit guides. Hypnosis is a great way for you to personally journey there and see who you're working with. Um, Yeah, it depends. Like, I feel like our spirit guides communicate to us in so many different ways. One of the ways I find that my guides communicate with me a lot is through my psychic abilities. So that's 
clear cognizance, which is like when you have that knowing that we were talking about earlier and clairvoyance, I get a lot of visual imagery. Um, and so they'll give me things through those mediums, but also just signs and synchronicities. I think our spirit team is the one who's setting up those signs and putting us in the right place at the right time and showing us those numbers to give us faith and doing whatever it takes to kind of be like answering our questions or guiding us along the way or giving us hope or whatever it is that we need in that moment. Mm -hmm. Have you, well, you grew up in San Diego area, right? Mm -hmm. So when I moved to LA, there were these things call uh, my my roommate at the time Chrissy love you Chrissy hi she uh was super in she worked in like casting and things and she would always submit herself for for free like jobs with like award shows things like that and she got us myself and her into the MTV movie awards one year I think it was 2009 2008 oh god and I and we ended up both being um escorts that sounds terrible we, <laughs> it's not the way you think I forget the word they used it was, it was like escort or um not valet I don't know the idea was we would we we got assigned a certain celebrity an and usher? we had no not an usher um but that's the other word that keeps popping into mind that's not I forget it I I have no idea what the word is but let's just say escort but not the dirty way you're so like a we, host basically <laughs> something like that <laughs> so we got assigned a certain celebrity and we had to basically make sure at a certain time they were where they needed to be so that they could accept their award or be on the stage for something or present or whatever it was and um that's how as you were explaining that I was like yeah I've done that job before I know what that's like making sure that the person you're in you're like supposed to be taking care of is in the right place at the right time and has all their needs met like I don't know about that but um like I had to make sure she had water and stuff like that so yeah um that's why I feel like it is something like like just making sure that they're <laughs> I was on the right wondering path. where this story was going there's was a like, reason that was the end of your story I don't get it <laughs> okay I get it I get it cool I don't even she got who'd she get she got um Justin Bieber no she got he wasn't even around in 2008, was he? I mean, he was alive. <laughs> That's your Probably question. maybe still on YouTube. Who was it? She got, oh, 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 she got um, Chris, Chris, Chris Pine. She got Chris Pine, which was pretty cool. I wanted to get one of the people from Twilight. Didn't happen. Oh, vampires, as you all know now. My <laughs> See, I'm into Twilight. I'm just not into, I've never seen Vampire Diaries. I actually saw the first episode and I was like, nah. <laughs> but maybe I'll give it Didn't a shot for you. I did. I watched the first episode. I feel you like if you're not hooked. For me, you do you. If, if you you're not like hooked it. in the first episode. Hey, it took me three episodes to get into Stranger Things, and then I was obsessed. So, you know, sometimes you just got to give it some time. You're so nice. You're like, if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. I'm like, no, you have to. <laughs> like, I tell people, I'm like, you have to watch the show. It will make you a better person. Just do it. <laughs> Especially my husband. He hates it. I make him watch The Bachelor with me. I make him watch oh, no. all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Despite himself, despite himself, I f he finds himself like talking to the people on the TV, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, are you into it? He's like, anyone no. would get brainwashed into that yeah. show. Even that happened to me, my friend. Of course like, it. Of you course have it did. to watch Bachelor in Paradise, which takes place in Vallarta, which is where we're yes, going on our street. Just side note, by the way, if you want to run into some bachelors and bachelorettes while we're there, that is a possibility. <laughs> it's a small town. <laughs> um but yeah my friend is like you gotta watch this and I was like I can't watch this garbage I can feel my brain cells dying off already and then I was like totally like sucked into it and I was like oh my god I understand that's how I felt He's yeah the first bachelor. time it's a great way for me to like decompress it's like a an inane yeah. something inane Speaking to just of spirit like focus guides, on. when you watch tv you can say to your spirit guides hey can you please work on my aura can you please heal me can you please up level my dna because you're zoning show? out yeah you're just chilling and you can use that as a time to up level speaking of which this brings me to a point that we definitely need to mention in this episode which is if you want help from your spirit guides, you should really ask flat out because they're actually not going to infringe on your free will. So exactly. they almost have to be invited in order to help you. 
So that's where prayer comes in. That's where journaling comes in. That's where intention setting comes in. You can speak out loud to them. You can speak in your mind to them, however it works for you, but put that intention out. Like if you need help solving a problem or if you need help getting better from an illness or whatever it is that you need support with, ask Mm -hmm. them for help. And if you don't necessarily know what to ask, that's okay. Where do I need to go? What do I need to do? Send me something that will show me the next step, you know? Um, something as general as that can do the trick and then just be patient, which is really hard, but it works. <laughs> yeah. And then if you are like me and Lindsay and you have a very anxious aspect, that's like not trusting of your life at all, then you just keep asking for more signs and they'll just keep fucking sending them. <laughs> I gotta say shout out to all those survivors out there because people who learned at a young age to take control of every aspect of their life because they could not survive any other way. It's hard for people like that, um, firsthand experience, it's hard for people like that to to really give up control and to trust. And it's a lifelong job. (laughs) It's a lifelong thing that you have to keep working at. Like when people say, oh, just trust your life. Like if you've never been able to trust your life and see that it worked out, have compassion for yourself that you're not able to trust your life. Yeah. Instead of trying to force it. Yeah. Exactly. Because maybe you physically can't yet because you've never actually seen evidence that that would work out. So you're just in survival mode of like, well, I don't know what's going to happen if I just think that it's all going to work out. I'm the one who always has to make it work out, you know? Yeah, exactly. If you're the type that needs a plan A, B, C, D, and E <laughs> all the way to Z, it might be more <laughs> difficult for you to just relax and trust. But people are there for you. Your spirit guides are your people. They got you. All you have to do is, it's like the trust fall thing. Just lean back. <laughs> Just lean back and fall. Trust they fall. will catch you every single time. Um, but you have to know that they're there. Um, oh, well, on that note, we got some hypnosis coming up. We're going to do a little journey for you guys to begin to reconnect. Sorry, I'm so mellow today, by the way. I'm super stuffed up. And I can, I can tell in my voice. So if I'm super annoying to people, I'm so sorry. But I'm noticing it as I'm speaking. So I had to say it. Anyway, we're going to be right back with some hypnosis to help you reconnect to your spirit guides and um, get to know them a little better. See you in a sec. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Right before the break, I told you, this is Lindsay here. I told you that we were going to do some hypnosis to connect to your spirit guides and get in touch with them even more. Um, As I always say before these hypnosis journeys, these little meditations, um, don't be driving a car. Don't be operating heavy machinery. Don't be super, you know, drunk. <laughs> I don't know. It's 145 Pacific time. I hope you're not drunk. Um, but just make sure you're in a place you can get away where you can not be disturbed. It is just like maybe 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, just relax and hopefully connect to some spirit guides. So just find a spot you can get settled in and just start taking some deep breaths. And if you want to visualize some good vibes, positive energy flowing in on every inhale, maybe attaching an emotion you want to bring into the body, into the mind, and every exhale, exhaling any negativity, tension, stress, or worry. And just take a few deep breaths, practicing that. And when the breath starts to regulate to its normal natural rhythm, just allow or visualize, imagine a light coming in through the top of the head, bringing that good vibe, that good energy, that reconnection to all that is into the top of the head, face and neck, all the way into the shoulders and the chest as you breathe. using the power of your mind to visualize, imagine, picture this light moving into the belly, upper arms, elbows, forearms, hips, wrists and hands, thighs and knees, calves and ankles. Just allow it to flow down the body, into the feet and finally out the toes. So there's a clean flow of energy into the top of the head all the way down and out the toes. And as you come to center, turning inward, 
focusing on the breath, focusing on this sense of ease. When the timing is right, just allow an image to form of someone that could be your spirit guide. However it appears to you without judgment, without editing, just allow what comes. Remembering that a true wise and loving guide can only be that, wise and loving. So take a moment, allow an image to form of your wise, all-knowing, and all-loving soul spirit guide. And when it forms, however it does for you, just notice about it with all of your senses. Notice the physical aspects, what you can see, in as many details as you can see. Reach out, touch what is there. Feel the textures. Notice the energy of this guide, its overall demeanor. Notice how you feel being with it. And notice how it responds when you tell it how you feel, reconnecting to it now. How does it say hello in a way that you can understand? Allow yourself to greet your guide in a way that feels best. Allow a conversation or connection to take place, communication of some kind, something that might be weighing on your mind or something that pops into your head that seems important. And allow it to respond in a way you can understand. And if there were one most important message that your guide would want you to know today, allow it to be spoken or received in some way, in the best way that you can think of, that you can understand what it's trying to tell you. And when the message is received, if you'd like, you can ask your guide if it would like to connect again at some later date and see how it responds. Ask if it will always be here when needed. And again, see how it responds. Remembering that a true wise and loving guy can only respond in one way. And so with a nice deep cleansing breath in, reinforcing all the positives the wisdom gained, saying farewell to your guide in a way that feels best, allowing the images to fade as you bring yourself back to the room, opening the eyes, taking a nice deep breath and taking a second to smile, remembering all the positive things and come back to the room. One, two, three, four, five, eyes open, wide awake for anyone that's still asleep. Hi, Kels. <laughs> hey, that was so good. I kind of, okay, not to be rude, but I did tune out a little bit towards the end because that's before, so normal. Even, before you even prompted me to see who it was, I had already get, I was already getting flashes of her as soon as I set the intention to like be with my spirit guide. Yeah. And it's interesting because 
this girl that I saw is a little girl, not like a wise adult. This is like a little child. Okay, I need to take a second and address this real quick because that is so important. So a lot of you might've had an idea of who you were gonna see or what it would look like or what you would like to experience before the hypnosis. But by going into the hypnosis, do not be surprised if it is completely different than what you thought it would be. It happens all the time. I'd say nine out of 10 times, it's different than what your conscious mind has an idea of because it's what your subconscious knows that you need instead. So go ahead. Sorry. Keep going. Yeah. And it was really interesting because this girl, I didn't ever think of her as being a part of my spirit team because I've seen her before in visions of my future as my daughter. Oh, so exciting. Yeah. So I'm so excited right now. I got goosebumps. This girl that wants to come through me. Well, I had a reading once and the lady that I was doing the reading with picked up on this little girl and was talking about her. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I've seen her too before. And she was like, yeah, you guys have this soul contract and she has psychic abilities like you. And part of the reason why she wants to come through you as the mother is because you're going to help her heighten those abilities from a young age. So she won't have to wait till she's 25. Like I did. She'll just go straight into it. Cause she's going to have a super witchy mom like me. And this girl is like wild. She is crazy. She has this big curly hair. She is spunky. She, she's, so she's similar, you. No, well, she's similar <laughs> to my inner child, but more dramatic and more wild. I was always very mm-hmm. cautious, mm-hmm. to very intellectual, kind of calm. I liked the arts. I liked Sounds Aquarius to me. Yeah. So I was kind of like a little old lady in a like little kid body. I always felt a lot of responsibility, but this girl is wild. She doesn't give a fuck what anybody thinks about her. She doesn't care about fitting in. She is like, she's just crazy. She's like a spitfire. I guess that's the best way to describe her. But I never thought of her as being a part of my spirit team. But now it makes sense because she has her own agenda for me to be her mom. So she wants me to be at the right place at the right time. So I can meet the right dad. So I can bring her into this world in the right time. I'm sure she's behind the scenes, like lining it all up. And I'm just thinking we almost went a whole show without getting the explicit rating <laughs> until just now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I had to yeah, it is. It, it kind of is. It's kind of a tradition. <laughs> but that's so awesome. So maybe cool? going forward, this this energy of this of this future daughter is who you connect with if something is – okay, so let's say for your last romantic experience, you could have been like, hey – is this what is this what's supposed to happen for this to happen? And maybe maybe it would have come out differently. What do you think? Mm, yeah, it would have been good. I mean, people told me things. This friend James, who's very psychic, he tells me things. He told I'm, me. He I'm was, pretty sure I told you things. You told me. You know, you just don't <laughs> want to listen when your friends are telling you how to live your life. I know. Even I know. It's true. Writing, you're like, I need to fuck up for myself, and yeah. I fucking did it. So, there but we- I I I like our relationship because even though you you asked, you know, what do you think? Yeah, I what respect you know? what you have and, to say. And I would I remember multiple times being like, "Do you want me to be honest?" <laughs> I'm always gonna ask. Like, do yeah. you really? Do you really? Because I know what that's like as well. Like, I don't want anyone stepping on my toes. But um, there are times I hear stuff and I just don't want to hear it anyway. But anyway, so yeah, that's fantastic. I love that you had do you have something new to like go to? We have one minute left. I want to ask you guys who came up in the hypnosis. Who do you know uh, was your spirit guide? Who were you surprised by? What are your spirit guide experiences before and after the hypnosis? I want to hear it all. And uh, Kels, what do you got? Yeah. Send us a direct message. We're both really active on Instagram. Lindsay's handle is at Lindsay Robinson and mine is at Kelsey Aida. That's A-I-D-A. If you're wondering how to spell it, um, also get on our Patreon, guys. That's where all the so good juicy goodies. stuff is. Um, you can watch this podcast as a video on there, and you get to uh, see in between all the commercial breaks and stuff because we're kind of nerdy. And also, don't forget to subscribe on whatever you're listening to this on. Or if you're not listening to it on there right now, you can go to iTunes, Spotify, our Heart Radio, iHeartRadio, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher. Or go to- or go to High Vibin' It. High Vibin it. Com has all the ways to listen to it. So yes. check it out. We love you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.